Hi, my name is Eliza Novak. I'm a project engineer at Fahrenheit. In this video, I'll be sharing some tips for the installation of adsorption chillers from Fahrenheit. First tip, get to know the technology, at least the basics. Try to understand the principle of operation and everything that I'm talking about in this video will become clear to you. You can find a short webinar on the heatforcool.eu website, and I can also recommend you our website, fahrenheit.cool, where you will find lots of interesting information and training material as well. Remember to invest some time in reading the manuals attached to your machine. In this way, uh, you will for sure spare yourself some common mistakes. Before you start planning the installation, think where the adsorption chiller will be placed. It requires around 80 centimeters clearance in front to access the control cabinet, and it also requires some clearance on both sides of the machine for maintenance and repairs. To be sure, check the required clearance at the technical drawing attached to your machine. In most of our machines, the hydraulic connections are located on top of the casing. Therefore, you should rather check the height of the room and the height of your chiller, just to be sure that there will be enough place for the piping uh, above the machine. The adsorption chiller must be placed indoors in a frost-free room and the temperature inside the room should not fall below five Celsius degrees at any time. Otherwise, there is a risk that the process modules will get damaged. Please keep in mind that this warning concerns each phase of the chiller's life, transport, installation, and storage as well. As a rule, always keep the adsorption chiller away from sub-zero temperatures. Of course, there may be exceptions from this rule, but if that's the case for your specific machine, you will be explicitly informed by Fahrenheit. For proper operation of the adsorption chillers, an efficient heat dissipation device is required. We usually use dry coolers, but there are also other options like cooling towers, hybrid coolers, dry coolers with spraying system. Regardless of the type, we usually call them recoolers. Recoolers are placed outdoors, preferably in shaded area on the northern side of the building. Think where to place the recooler on your side. It should not be too far away from the adsorption chiller to keep the pressure losses reasonable, but you'd rather not place it in direct sunlight either. Remember that in most of the European countries, the recoolers will be exposed to negative temperatures. Therefore, it is crucial to protect the water inside the recooler from freezing and thus avoid the damage of the coil. It is usually achieved by mixing the water with some antifreeze additive before filling the recooler. During the installation planning stage, it is important to understand that all three internal circuits of the adsorption chiller are connected to one another, so that during operation, all circuits are mixed. Therefore, you should remember that all circuits should be filled with one and the same fluid. Considering what I've just said about freeze protection of the recooler, one must either uh, fill all circuits with antifreeze additive or hydraulically separate the chiller from the recooler. From Fahrenheit's experience, I recommend you the latter option as it ensures better performance of the chiller. The circuits can be separated by means of plate heat exchanger. Please remember that if you separate the circuits, you will need an additional pump in the separated circuit. And when it comes to the plate heat exchangers, you can find suitable models in our product catalog under system separation. And one last tip regarding system separation. It may sound obvious, but please remember that it must be placed indoors. Some adsorption chillers have a system separation already integrated in their casing. In such case, the circuit containing the system separation can be filled with a different fluid than the other two circuits. If you are not sure if your machine contains the system separation, uh, you should check it in the manuals or you can consult it with your Fahrenheit sales representative. 
once talking to the sales representative, ask him or her if your system is suitable for free cooling. Free cooling is one of the best ways to increase the benefits your adsorption chiller is offering. It is an operating mode in which cold water is being directly cooled down in the recooler. And this mode is activated when the ambient temperature falls four degrees below the cold water set point. You don't need to plan anything extra in the installation except for one ambient temperature sensor connected to the chiller. A good practice, especially when you plan to use free cooling, is to foresee a buffer tank in the cold water circuit and to connect the buffer temperature sensor with the adsorption chiller. It will not only smoothen the temperature and load profile, it will also have a positive effect on the operation of the chiller itself. Without a buffer tank, the adsorption chiller goes in and out of standby mode based on the outlet temperature of cold water. And this value changes more rapidly than the temperature of the whole buffer tank. Therefore, without the buffer, your chiller is going to switch to standby mode more frequently. Some final tips for the installation planning stage. Circulation pumps for each circuit are included inside the adsorption chiller. When dimensioning the external pipelines, please take into account the available delivery head of these three pumps. And don't forget to provide shutoff valves, install air release valves at the highest point of each circuit, protect each circuit from overpressure by using expansion vessels and safety valves, and if necessary, protect the adsorption chiller from contamination by the use of dirt traps. Okay, you have carefully planned the installation, your chiller has arrived, and now you want to connect the hydraulics. For this stage, I have three very simple tips for you. Firstly, pay attention to the direction of the flow. Inlets and outlets of each circuit are visibly marked on the casing. Inlet is always the stream that enters the machine, and outlet is always the stream that leaves the machine. Second one. Our hydraulics is hard soldered. Therefore, please counter hold when tightening, otherwise you may damage it. And the third tip concerns the thermal insulation. I am sure you have planned the thermal insulation of external pipelines. However, please make sure that you use diffusion tight insulation for the cold water circuit. And if you plan to use free cooling, you should also plan such diffusion tight insulation for the recooling circuit. Once the hydraulics is connected and checked, it's time to fill in the adsorption aggregate with proper fluid. Such fluid is simply pure water. In most of the cases, it can be tap water. Before you fill in the aggregate, however, uh, please check the operating manual for the exact values of required water quality and check if your tap water corresponds with these requirements. If not stated differently in the operating manual of your specific machine, do not use deionized water. No DI water. It is more susceptible to attract metals from the installation it's flowing through, and then it can lead to the corrosion of the pipelines. As said before, for the proper operation of the adsorption chiller, you will need a recooler. Fahrenheit provides dry coolers and dry coolers with spraying system, which are specifically designed to fit with each of our standard machines. However, if you'd like to use a different type of recooler, for example, a cooling tower, we can also help you to select an appropriate model. Regarding the installation of the recoolers, I also have some tips for you. When choosing the installation place, Please remember that the recooler must be accessible for maintenance. If you plan to place it on the roof, make sure that it will be safe for maintenance technicians to go up there. And since recoolers can be really heavy, you should carefully check the carrying capacity of the roof as well. The recooler should be filled with the mixture of water and ethylene glycol. Concentration of glycol should be based on the lowest expectable temperature in the place of installation so that, 
sufficient freeze protection is granted at all the time. For Germany, for example, we usually use 34%. Remember to rinse the glycol lines sufficiently and avoid possible bubble formation during filling. And here I would like to remind you once again about the importance of system separation. If the recooler is going to be placed on a higher level than the adsorption chiller, for example on the roof of the building, and the pipeline is going to be bigger than DN50, then remember to install gravity brakes in both supply and return line of the recooler. The reason is to avoid unwanted circulation caused by gravity forces. I will not go into details in this video, just remember that this unwanted circulation can cause unwanted evaporation, uncontrolled freezing, and damage of the process modules. When it comes to the electrical connection and residual current devices, use only all current sensitive type B RCDs. And finally, don't forget about the air release valve and that it has to be placed at the highest point of the circuit. Once installed, the chiller is ready for commissioning. This must be done by Fahrenheit employees or by our certified partners. The installation must be prepared for commissioning beforehand. The chiller must be connected hydraulically and electrically. The drive heat at sufficiently high driving temperature must be available, the recooler must be functioning, and the cooling distribution system must be turned on. During the commissioning, you will face another consequence of the fact that the hydraulic circuits are interconnected. The cold water and recooling circuit can get briefly streamed with hot water from the high temperature circuit. Please ensure that nothing will get damaged because of this brief temperature increase in the cold water and recooling circuit. For the full list of commissioning requirements, please check the manuals or contact Fahrenheit representative. And one last thing, some cold drinks for the technicians who are commissioning your machine will be handy.